Hello everyone and welcome back to another My Time at Porsche Guide. Today we are going to look at the ruins, starting with the abandoned ones and then moving on to the hazardous ones. Now, there are four abandoned ruins throughout the course of the game. You'll start with this one here, Abandoned Ruins number one. Yes, it is very creatively named. Yes, there is an Abandoned Ruins number two, which you'll actually unlock fairly early on. Pretty much right after you finish the bridge to Porsche, uh, to Amber Island. Um... So if you want to advance the story enough to do that and then get the second ruins, go for it. Just don't go into Amber, the Amber Island Cave to advance your story until you're really ready with the DD stops and everything. But looking at these ruins, you can see two things. The arrow's pointing in. Yep, that's where you're going to go in. You see this little thing here. It's sparkling. It's labeled as an elevator. We'll talk about that one a little bit later. It's not really of any use to us right now on Demo Girl. It's only the third day in the game. So, to access each ruins, you're going to have a set amount of goals you have to pay to access that specific ruin, and you'll get a one-week pass. So, for this ruins, it's normally 200 goals. The very first time you pay for it, doesn't matter if it's day three like this, or day 29, or, you know, whatever, the end of spring, you know, or early summer. The first time you pay for it, you get a 60% discount, so it'll be 80 goals. Every ruins after that, it'll go up in cost, so your abandoned ruins too will be 300 goals and so on. So let's go on inside, pay for that. You can see, yep, 80 goals, and we'll go inside. And as soon as we go inside, since this is the first time, we'll get the little pop-up saying, hey, here's the keys of how you do your tutorial stuff. But you can see there's two big changes to my character model. I've got this jetpack on back, and that's a really easy change. It just changes your jump button. So if I just do it just a squint jump, you still see that jumping there, and I can hold it and keep flying and flying and flying and just going and going and going. It eventually runs out, but it recharges really fast, as you can see. I fell and I came back. The other thing you'll notice is the relic scanner over my eyes. The way that this works is you hit the specified key or button if you're on console, and it'll send this pulse out. It has a certain radius that it can detect relics. So we'll go walking over here, and there you see, I've got these yellow dots. There will also be ones that are kind of, they look pinkish on my screen. The the wiki says they're purple. That'll be like hidden rooms. Uh, I don't know if we'll see any with here, but those work kind of like the hazardous ruins. You'll find them and figure that out real quick. You go inside, there's a few monsters in there. There's some stuff sitting around open, like some sofas, as well as some chests, and you'll have access to those. But that's how the scanner works. Now... I cannot swing. I'm like I'm clicking here. I can't swing. I can't do anything. Put on my pickaxe. While the scanner is active, I cannot swing my pickaxe. Also, you can only, with your first level of the scanner, select one item at a time. It's going to change the items. Now, we'll talk about this a little later, but there are two upgrades that you can get for the scanner. Now, in each ruins, you're going to notice that there's different colors as you can see them here we've got like the, the gray here if i hit that it's gonna get me stone i might get some soil or sand from it if it's close to those but you can hear that clank 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 you know that sound that it makes it has a different sound for each texture so if i come to this tan this is gonna get me sand and soil and you can hear that's a much softer grinding thing but if I come to this bigger brown section over here, it'll have a more metallic clink to it, and this is going to get me copper and sometimes tin. And that's basically the what the, they're going to find in the ruins. Each ruins is going to have a slightly different set of colors for it. They'll all have the gray and the tan. But like our next ruins will give this kind of reddish, grayish, blackish, mottled kind of textured one. For iron and also lead will be sometimes in it, kind of like how tin is sometimes in the copper. And then you'll have another one that's kind of a teal or cyan that has manganese in it. And then your next ruins up will still have the iron, but it's getting for the manganese for two new metals and so on. Another thing that's going to change is the relics. Now, with this first scanner, you can't tell what the heck it is. Other upgrades will let you see the outline of it and even the name of it. But if you dig towards those, you'll pick up something. It might be like a chest that's got some parts in it. It might be a piece of a relic. It might just be a loose tennis racket. And we're kind of right on as soon we won't see it in a while. Let's move over a little bit here. Yep, and there's the chest. 
you know, you come up to these and they'll have old parts, they'll have uh, power stones, they might have uh, data disks, which we'll see. Yep. Power stones, old parts, power stones. And then I can come over here and I can see, okay, there's some more over here, so I can keep digging and digging and digging. And we'll move over here and just kind of demonstrate something for you. Because you'll get into these grooves of like, okay, I'm going for this relic piece, this relic piece, this relic piece, and so on. Until you go, well, crap, I can't find my way out. How did I get out of here? Which will lead to what we're going to demonstrate here. So here's a good example. This is a clock. This is just something you can put up on the wall in your house and it'll give you some boosts. I can't remember if it's stamina or hit points. Max health. So, okay, you know, you're like, okay, well, I'm down here. I can't find my way out. Well, what you can do is go to your map. And maybe there's a whole, you find a whole little, like, constellation of relics all near each other. You want to put a, a marker there so that when you come back the next day, because maybe you're out of stamina at the end of your day. But you can see down here, for me, it's an E key, but for you on consoles, it'll be something else. But I can move to my ruin entrance. It'll say, are you sure? It'll automatically teleport back. So, you know, you can definitely make use out of all these cool things. But if you look at your calendar here, today's the third. If we count this out, you know, counting today is one of those days. At the seventh day, you'll see this little icon showing up. Abandoned Ruins number one is about to expire. And yes, if you've got multiple different ruins unlocked, I can have Abandoned Ruins 1 and Aban over here, while Abandoned Ruins 2 is over here for the expiration and so on. But this day that it's showing is the last day you have access with your current pass. If you're coming from Sandrock, if you've, you've been hearing lots of great things from Sandrock, and you decide, let's go see what Portion was about first, since it's a complete game. You know, Sandrock's still being designed. Sandrock does it where the 10th would be, it has icon saying, pass expired. So... That's one difference between the two games. If you're coming backwards, keep in mind, this doesn't mean that the ruins are expired that day. It means this is this is the last day you have access to it. Now, I'm going to switch over to my personal file, and we're going to demonstrate some of the yeah, advancements in what happens with later abandoned ruins, kind of demonstrate what I was talking about with those, as well as what the scanner upgrades look like and what that elevator is going to do. So I'll be right back. And we're back, and this is Abandoned Ruins 2, and like I said, it's going to cost a little bit more. This one's going to cost 300 gold to go in. So let's just demonstrate something for you here real quick. You know, maybe you've reached this point where you're like, well, I've been digging and digging, and, you know, you can see, like, I've kind of torn this place up getting my ores and stuff from it. So you're like, well, maybe I need to go... How do I get more ores from this place? I need to get more, or I can't find any relics, and I need this one relic piece to complete the set for this done, this ruins. What you can do is what that's that sparkly looking terminal is for. It's going to have two options for you. Well, most of the time it's going to be just one, but sometimes you'll have a second one. So, like you can see, I got the second one here. If I select the elevator, I can spend 20 goals to switch to another area of the abandoned ruins. It effectively resets everything. Uh, all of that's in there. It's going to have a whole new format and everything. So if I do that, go that, and then I go back in, it's effectively a brand new ruins. It's not going to have the same format and setup as the last one. And now I can come in here. And like I said before, you can see, you know, here's that what that iron looks like. There's the you got little teal and bluish one. There's your manganese, and they are often next to each other. Now. There, you can sometimes, while hitting these, get tin or copper. Like there's a, some tin right there, you can see. But they're not going to be visible. They're just kind of added in once. But with your first relic upgrade, you get a wider range to it. It cuts off a lot of the time it takes to scan one of these, and you also get the ability to. It now shows the highlights. Well, it highlights the outline of it. But you can now select three different things. And oh, there's a perfect example of what I was talking about. Let me switch to something else here so we can see that color on that. All right. There is, you can kind of see it, that little pinkish purplish color there. If I highlight that, that's because it's a tunnel to a hidden room. And these will work kind of like the hazardous ruins that we'll talk about a little later, where you have monsters inside, there's chests loose, but there's not like, you don't have to pick 
you know, use your pick to dig through materials to get your ores and all that. However, unlike the hazardous ruins, your time will still progress in here. And we'll talk about that a little bit later when we get to the hazardous ruins. But these are always good to have. They will still show up on your scanner even after you've cleared them. So, you know, that's a thing. But you can see I can go, oh, okay, abandoned room. Go inside and, you know, there'll be some level one or low level enemies. And I can just come in here and kill them. You know, and I'll find, here we go. Just loose, just get, get a pink sofa or the leather sofa. Kill this guy, get a chest. And the chest might have like a engine or whatever. Yep, there we go, there's an engine. A lot of the tech stuff that you'll find from the hazardous ruins. So this might be like your first introduction to what the hazardous ruins are kind of like. You know, a silicon ship and so on. Then you can just go back out. And if I move away, you'll see that it is, even though I found it there, it's a little purplish pinkish. The circle is still showing up. So, you know, keep in mind of that. But as you can see, like, I'm seeing a ton of things here. I've increased my radius. It goes much faster than it did on the first level. And this little upgrade is going to cost you 2,000 goals. It's just a one-time fee, and you have access for the rest of the game. So let's go back out, and we'll get the third upgrade and final upgrade, or the second and final upgrade, rather. Your, your third tier, we'll call it. Nope. Oh. And show what that one does. Because it's kind of finicky at times. It's useful. It's really useful. But it is... Uh, it, we'll see if we can get it finicky. Oh, no. We don't want to do that. So upgrade. Costs 5,000 goals. This will allow you to scan five relic points at a time and display the names. It says me at a time. It's like a shotgun blast. It, you highlight one and it finds the next, the, the next four closest ones as well. So you highlight five all at once. And it's going to show their outline. It's going to show their name. And this one really cuts down the time even more. Like the first upgrade will cut off like 1.25 seconds to how long it takes. And this one's going to cut off an extra 0.75 seconds. So you can see it's just really fast. And if I can find some of those that are kind of overlapping here, we might see it getting finicky here. There we go. Where it can jump around back and forth between two sets of them. So, you know, you got to be careful with it. It has its pros and has its cons, but it's absolutely really useful. And it has a really wide radius. And that is should about cover it for the abandoned ruins. There is one last thing to talk about. Let's see if we can find some of them here. Uh, and I'm not finding any. There we go. Soldier with Axe Piece. You can see Soldier with Blade Piece 1, Soldier with Axe Piece 5. Duck on a King piece one. A lot of these relics you're going to find are going to come in pieces. And so then you're going to have to go over to the research center to put them back together. So let's jump over there and do that right now. All right, and we're back at the research center. And you'll see this big old machine here. It's the recovery machine. So if you find all of the pieces to your, your uh, relics, and they can run from anywhere from two to five pieces, as you can see here. It'll also cost you some data disks, so like here's the old thermos, this is two pieces with a data disk. Got a statue, five pieces, two data disks, soldier with scepter, five pieces with three data disks, and so on. You can put them together and recover it if you've got all the pieces on you as long as the data disks, and recover it, and it'll instantaneously recover it. These are useful, they can be put up in your, your yard, or in your home for the boost to a lot of them. We'll give you stats. But you'll also later on unlock the museum, and eh, not too late into the story, it's kind of at, probably around the same time that you've unlocked the Ufala Desert, maybe a little earlier. And they can be put on display in here, as well as all the other things that you craft at your station. So, these displays, you know, people will come and check at them, and those will increase your relationship with them, or your reputation. You can check, oh, okay, yep, there's that. And so... Those will be good, and as you progress this enough, you'll actually get a, a here of 10 items, a recovery machine of your own at your home. This one will work differently. The one that you have at home will take time to re reprocess them, but it won't cost data disks. Whereas the one in the research center does instantaneously, but costs the data disks. Also, you have to have them physically on your person for the research center. 
but as long as they're in your chests and on your property, you can upgrade them, you know, do it from there, from home. Now, let's move on to the Hazardous Ruins. Now, there's two different types of Hazardous Ruins in the game. You have your story-based ones. The earliest example is uh, Amber, the Cave on Amber Island. You'll be first sent there, like, right after you've built a bridge, you'll get sent there to, you know, go put in a power generator and so on, and it'll become a hazardous ruin where you're fighting banner rats and all that. Those are your story-based ones. They work in a lot of ways similar to the uh, regular ones, but there's one big difference there in that you'll have, like, these little cooking pots there. You'll see, like, food hopping around in them, kind of like the, the ones... The little cooking stations in uh, Legend of Z uh, Breath of the Wild, and you hit, you go up to them, and you activate it, and you'll restore stamina. They usually have like one use, maybe two or three, but you'll also never be able to go back to those ruins. So they'll, they'll shut down right away after that. You completely clear them. Whereas these ones, you can come back anytime you want. You do not need to pay a pass for this, unlike the, the abandoned ruins. But what you do pay is your time. See, both sets of ruins, when you're inside them, time does not pass. Your stamina will still be consumed, which is why you have the stamina regeneration ones in the story-based ones. But you'll need to prepare for them when you come down to, into like the sewage plant here and so on. Now, when you first visit these, you'll just see sewage plant level 1, your level here, and time consumed. These three things here will be all gray question mark looking ones. And you'll have to clear this level to get access to this level, to this level, and this level. One of the differences between the two is that these will have multiple floors. So let's go in here to Sewage Plant Level 1. I'm going to be way higher level than it needs to be, but that's fine. And you'll, you'll see that there's floors within each level. So here I have one to five floors. I'm on the first five floors. And, oh, I've got zero kills. Now, you see that grading behind that? At the end of there? I have to kill everything on this floor before that grate will open. There will be floors where all you have to do is just get to point A to point B, because it's more of a, a platforming puzzle with, like, hazardous, you know, toxic waste or whatever in the bottom. And so that's your thing. But you've got to kill these guys. And sometimes when you kill, there, some will respawn. So, as you see, like, I'm taking damage from things, there's poison down here, there'll be water that'll be hazardous in here, and mm. so, absolutely bring your healing items, bring your stamina cover items early on, and so on. If you need to leave, or you went to the wrong level, and you've got access to other levels, you can access this to do so. But, we're going to continue through and show what the rest of these kind of things look like. Because there's more to than just monsters in here. Oh, there we go. Kind of spawned in a little late. But you'll have these crates here that you can break, and they'll sometimes have goals or old parts or health recovery or, or stamina recovery items like, you know, uh, dried apples. There we go. There's some dried apples spawned. You know, you might get, uh, it's not called jerky in this one, but like dried meat or something like they call it that. And so, absolutely, feel free to break those. It might get you some stamina regeneration if you're running low. You'll have other rooms. We'll hopefully have floors so that we'll hopefully find one here next where they'll have traps upon. Okay, and this is an example. It's only got so many things it can do, so it's spawned in the exact same floor slightly differently. So now I gotta kill the same guys again and do that. But you'll have floors where, like, There's, uh, it's just like there's, maybe we'll see it in this next floor. This will, this will be the last floor for this layer before we have to fight the boss. Here we go. This is what I was talking about. You'll have floors like this where there's nothing but platforming. You just got to get from point A to point B. You can see there's no grade on that. And your hazard is just because, well, that's poisonous and doing damage. You'll have ones where there'll be traps. And the traps will be pretty obvious. You'll have, like, rooms where it's like, oh, there's three chests here. Well, there's also two enemies on the sides, and as you get closer, you'll see their health bars. 
But there will also be this one like slightly off-colored square that if you step on it, it'll drop a boulder on you. You know, so on. You'll be able to spot the traps pretty easily most of the time. Uh, later ruins will have things like... Or later floors of these will have things that are like... You gotta wait for it to... to it has a hazardous spray, maybe it's fire or this toxic waste in the sewage. If you walk through it while it's spraying, it does damage, but if you wait, it'll turn off and you can go through. And then at the final floor of each section, you'll have a boss fight. And the boss is the same for every single layer of that ruin. So, layers one, two, three, four, I'm gonna have to fight this guy over and over and over. And you'll learn their ca attack patterns, he's gonna have that. If I get close, he's gonna do this swing out here, and then that slam down. Swing out there, slam down. Once he gets his health low enough, he'll start trying to shoot to get me off of him. And if he gets me far enough away, he'll start doing a constant spray. Now, you saw all that stuff that came up there. That's all I got from killing him, and then those last three, the simple circuits, and, and the antidote, and so on, and the jet tube, those were my rewards for the floor. Those all that'll be a pause between those. So, if I go down here, to either of, the, either of the exits. On this floor, I can go here to do it again. But you can see, okay, there's the engine, those, the simple circuits, those will, now will start showing up. And so the hazardous ruins are really good. You're not gonna run them for your ores per se. I mean, it's possible that, yeah, I got an iron bar. You can have access to this before you even finish the, the bridge to Amber Island, you know? Now, whether you come here before that or not is, is a, another matter, because literally after you finish the bridge to Amber Island, the next day you'll get a note that the Abandoned Ruins 2 is now open to you. And that'll also give you the quest to, you know, go clear the cave to Amber Island, which is your first hazardous ruins. And just like I said in my tips video, unless you're ready with all your DDs and all that, don't advance past that. Don't rush the story, because you're going to need... DDs, and then you're going to need D stops, and you're going to start getting these like little rushes, and then you'll have those quiet moments again. Well, this is a good place to gather those materials you're not going to find elsewhere. You know, sulfate, valves, metal jars, jet tubes, your circuits, especially your tempering liquid. You need this to make reinforced glass, which is useful for, uh, amongst other things, making your better chests, like your storage chests, the metal ones. So... Yeah, make your runs in here. You can see I absolutely brought stamina and health regeneration stuff. I didn't need it, but I still brought it. And so, yeah, that about covers it for both sets of ruins. Do you have any questions about what the ruins look like? Do you have uh, any questions about what you want to see next? Let me know in the comment section below. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I will catch you guys next time. See ya!